Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation Program uh, Applicant Workshop for Program Year 2021. Um, my name is, again, for those of you I already introduced myself to, but doing it again for video, uh, uh, my name is Allison Ball. I'm a planner with Cuyahoga County Planning Commission, and I am the District 1 liaison to the Ohio Public Works Commission and uh, the communities and applicants for the Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation Program. Uh, the other host today is Jennifer Klein, and I'll let her introduce herself. So, Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Klein. I am the Ohio Public Works Program Rep for District 1. Uh, I also work with Districts 3, 10, 15, and 19, um, so I'm spread across most of the state. Um, yeah, that's enough for now. We'll get into it. <laughs> All right, great. So I'm going to start sharing the screen. Um, again, this is great. I see everybody's getting used to the Zoom and everybody's on mute. Um, if you have questions as we go along, um, it's best to put them in the chat box and uh, we will monitor that. Um, but there will be, uh, we'll open it up to question and answers and discussion, uh, further discussion at, after the presentation. So uh, that's it. Let's get started. So share. All right. Um, okay, so can everyone see the screen? Uh, if you can. Yes. Uh, okay, good. All right, so welcome and let's get started. Why is this not working? Huh. So next, there you go. Hmm. So today, the overview of the, um, the agenda will give an overview of the Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation Program. We'll review the purpose the program implementation, types of projects, and share District 1 results um, over the years. And then uh, the second half of the program will, uh, today's program will look at um, the program year 2021. We'll look at what, um, how much money we have available. Most importantly, what's new for program year 2021. We have a lot of changes this year. Um, we'll go over the applications, the evaluation methodology, um, and the application requirements, because um, these are really important. If you don't meet these requirements, your application will not be reviewed. And then again, like I said, we'll have time for question and answer um, after all of that as well. So there you go. So Jen? Yes, uh, so the Clean Ohio Fund was started in 2000. It uh, overall encompassed four different types of funding. There was brownfield revitalization, um, farmland preservation, uh, green space conservation, and uh, recreational trails. And each one was uh, organized and administered by a different state agency. Um, currently, the brownfield revitalization is no longer a uh, funding program, but the farmland preservation is run by uh, the Department of Agriculture and the recreational trail program is run by ODNR. Um, so the green space uh, conservation program is what OPWC administers and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, next slide. Uh, so the Green Space Conservation Program is for the uh, to preserve open spaces and stream corridors um, to help protect wetlands and endangered species. Um, did you go back? Oh, whoops. There you go. <laughs> um, you can go forward now. Uh, so the purpose of the Clean Ohio Fund that OPWC administers, the green space conservation is to preserve open space, protect preparing corridors, protect rare and threatened and endangered species, um, support open space planning, preserve wetlands and streamside forests and stream channels and floodplains. Um, 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're good to go. Okay. All right, so the Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation Program is administered by the Ohio Public Works Commission. Um, the state has been split up into 19 Natural Resources Assistance Council um, in the state and Cuyahoga County is District 1. So we're a single county district. You can see how they're all um, made up or, or, or well, you can see all the different counties there. Uh, not all of them are single county districts. Um, so in Cuyahoga County, this program is so important. Here is a Cuyahoga County land use map from 2018. Um, and you can see that, uh, that over 85% um, of the county is um, developed. We have 15% green space uh, and that's parks and open space. And that also, I believe includes uh, golf courses. So this is uh, actually quite an improvement. When I first started administering this program, uh, we were at 10% green space. So that's a uh, pretty exciting uh, to see that increase. It's not all because of Clean Ohio, but I would like to think so. Mm -hmm. um, uh, between two, 2020, 124 projects have been submitted and 80 projects have been awarded funding that totals a little over $49 million. So this year we will pass the $50 million mark. Um, this resulted in over 2,000 acres of natural areas and green space and over 58,000 linear feet of riparian corridors protected. So the way uh, this program uh, works and is administered is that it is overseen by uh, OPWC, uh, the Ohio Public Works Commission, oversees two programs, the Infrastructure and the Clean Ohio Conservation Program. Um, so, and the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee, one step down, uh, is the committee for the infrastructure projects and they were established first. So uh, the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committees, they appoint the Natural Resources Assistance Council members and um, the Natural Resources Assistance Council implements the program locally. Um, they develop the project selection and evaluation methodology and they select projects for funding and they make the recommendations to OPWC. So, and then circling back, those recommendations go back to uh, OPWC and they uh, give the final approval of recommended projects. And even before that, they approve the methodologies, uh, which brings me to a little bit of a segue. Um, I know that some of you that had signed up for this meeting did attend the um, July 29th meeting to review the methodology. Um, the methodology in substance has been approved, but there's been some language changes to make sure that the district language and the OPWC language are consistent. Um, so there uh, is another meeting um, this Friday on August 21st to review those uh, language changes. And once that is approved by the NRAC and then the director of OPWC, we will have that up and uh, on our website and emailed out to you. So uh, that is the status of how this um, program implementation works and where we are in this round. So the NRAC membership is made up of 11 members. I'm not going to list them all today, but um, the important thing to look at is on the right column, you'll see that uh, they represent different sectors of the community, environmental, government, park systems. Uh, there is an appointment from the District 1 Public Works Integrated Committee, um, agricultural, uh, business, realtors, and planning, and they bring their expertise to the evaluation of these projects. Um, so it's a very diverse committee, and these terms uh, uh, are three-year terms. So. The, so there's, uh, oh, go ahead. Three, okay. There's uh, three types of eligible projects that you're allowed to submit an application for. The first type 
is an open space project. So uh, either acquisition, a fee simple acquisition of open space, or it could be a conservation easement put on a parcel of land. Um, and when you submit an application for a fee simple acquisition, you can also include some eligible uh, site improvements, which we'll get into a little later. Um, so the NRAC is looking for open space that enhances uh, natural corridors or um, uh, um, sorry about that. Deck slide. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's not working again. Uh, next. So, uh, so this is an example. Go ahead, Allison. Okay, I was going to say this is an example um, from program year 2019. It's the expansion of Euclid Creek Reservation. So. Um, and I forget how many acres it was, but yeah, just changing up the examples from year to year. So you don't <laughs> think I, we only have three projects <laughs> that were funded. So, uh, so the um, next type of eligible project is a repairing corridor. Uh, it can include a free symbol purchase of a repairing corridor land, or it can be a stream restoration of uh, repairing land that the applicant already owns and you can apply for funding for stream restoration, um, invasive removal uh, to help reforest land or to um, enhance the repairing area. All right, so this is the West Creek Confluence Project. Um, and uh, so this is a riparian project uh, that you can see in the lower left. It was a channelized stream. Um, it uh, did not have any uh, flood, um, uh, flood control and flood uh, banks. And so it would just flood the building that was nearby. Um, and then in the lower right, you can see how it was improved. Um, and uh, recently on uh, social media, I saw a picture of this project overgrown and really absorbing all the floodwaters from some of the recent rain. Oh. Mm -hmm. Did we lose Allison? Can everyone still hear me? Yeah, we can still hear you and yeah, we lost Allison. Great. <laughs> Um, well, I have the slides, so I can share my screen, and she can work on getting back. Let's share this. Okay. Allison's computer just died. Um, so we were here. Sure. Okay. Sorry about this, everyone. Okay. Um, so yes, this was an example of a repairing corridor project. Uh, the West Creek confluence. Um, the bottom right picture is a semi recent, I think that was right after it was completed. Um, but yes, it is much better now in floodplains and making it a beautiful, uh, clean Ohio space. Um, so the last type of an eligible project is an improvement only project. And so this was just approved two or three years ago, I believe. Um, so it used to only be either open space or repairing corridor. And now if you previously acquired a clean Ohio property, um, fee simple in year 
let's just say round two or any of the years past, you were in, and at the time you did not ask for any eligible improvements, uh, you can now submit a new application to uh, just do improvements to that uh, parcel. Uh, the most popular and typical uh, application for this is to request um, access improvements such as trails or a parking lot um, to help the public access your parcel. Um, invasive species removal is allowed one time. So if you requested it on the first application, you are not allowed to come back and submit a second application. Um, and this, this was really implemented to help some of the NRACs who were having trouble spending down their money. Some NRACs were sitting with large balances. And so this was a way we thought we could help them uh, get that money spent was to open it up to previously acquired projects and they can just apply for um, improvement only projects but NREC1 is a uh, very comp very competitive program um, but I believe last year and last round we did have one project um, the Lower Big Creek Trail Connector project um, that had been previously acquired and they requested um, improvement only monies. Um. Hello, can you guys all hear me? You're back. I'm back. My computer just started rebooting. <laughs> I came here um, so I wouldn't have any glitches with my um, wonky internet at home, so I apologize. Um, and we did have the Lower Big Creek project was our first open space project. So that, um, oh, okay. yes, and it was originally purchased in program year 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and it came back for the open space improvements in 2019. And uh, again, I um, just took this from the application. It would be great to follow up and get some pictures as they progress, but the improvements will include a trail, uh, a trail parking uh, amenities, signage, kiosks, lighting, and fencing. So, awesome. and that makes that um, space now um, uh, usable for the public and will eventually join in uh, um, with the surrounding I think that's the, I forget, the zoo. Um, so there'll be trail connections uh, oh. to the reservation there. So uh, next slide, take over. <laughs> um, I don't know what this was. Uh, this is um, the introduction to this year. So this is the second half of the program. Um, I hope that that little section where I was out was recorded. If not, I'll just re-record this whole thing by myself and get it up on the... I do see you recording on my screen still. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, so wait, there's a question. Just to confirm, improvements can only be done on land acquired through Clean Ohio Open Space. And that is correct. So it's a previous project um, and they'll ask you in the application, you know, what year was it um, purchased and a brief description of that project. Yeah. So, um, there you go. Oh, this um, is me. So, a lot of new stuff. So Jen, take it away. Yes. Um, so uh, one of the new things that uh, OPWC is now going to require for Clean Ohio applications is an appraisal. Uh, this isn't a new thing for NRAC 1. I think they've typically always required an appraisal with the application, um, but not every NRAC did. Uh, so OPWC is requiring an appraisal be completed at time of application or before application, and we are allowing the NRACs to decide whether that is a restricted appraisal or a full appraisal. Um, and we will we can pay for both of those um, if you get the is Allison is this NRAC require full appraisals? This NRAC requires full appraisals. So restricted doesn't even matter. Yeah. Um, uh, 
and the other new thing is the appraiser needs to sign and certify that they have read uh, OPWC's um, appraisal standards. So that is another one of the new things um, on our website. I'll just click that. Beautiful. Uh, so yes, our appraisal standards are on our website and uh, you can read through them and the appraiser should read through them and they need to sign that they have read them. That is one of the new requirements. And um, Jen, we usually also talk about the, the appraiser, the appraisal can be up to a year old. That's what OPWC will accept. So if you had an appraisal, you know, a couple months ago um, and that is still reimbursable, right? Correct, yeah. Appraisals are good um, one year from the date of publication, basically. Um, so yes, it doesn't have to be uh, brand new, but yeah, within one year of your application submittal. Um, appraisers still need to be on the ODOT pre-qualified list. Um, if you're having, uh, if you're purchasing a conservation easement, um, the appraiser can be someone who has passed the valuation of conservation easement professional development program that is now an approved um, appraiser if you are uh, applying for a conservation easement. Um, another new thing is uh, it's always been OPWC's policy that we will uh, pay above appraised value if it is justified and approved by the NRAC. Um, and so now we are capping that at 5%. Um, so for example, let's, for easy numbers, if you have an acquisition of $100,000, but your seller will not go below $120,000, that would be 20% above appraised value. Um, you are allowed to purchase it for $120,000, but what you put in the application can only be 5% above appraised value. The number that you'll put on the acquisition line in the application would be $105,000. Um, so that extra $15,000, you as the applicant are allowed to pay for completely outside of the grant. It will not count as part of the total project cost. It does not count towards your local share. Um, that will be completely outside of your application. Um, in your application, you'll need to explain to the NRAC, let them know. You'll submit the appraisal, so they'll know that amount, and you'll let them know we, we couldn't negotiate past this amount, um, justify why we're paying above appraised value, and so they will need to approve that with the understanding that anything above 5% will be completely on the uh, applicant. Um, and that's just another link to the appraisal standards that lists all of this in much more detail. Another thing we have updated on our website is our eligible and eligible list. We've tried to make it more extensive um, and hopefully easier to understand. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but we've broken down the list into eligible things that are allowed to be paid for with OPWC funds, um, eligible things that are allowed to happen on a Clean Ohio property that cannot be paid for with OPWC funds, like um, a restroom or a pavilion or a drinking fountain um, or a statue, things like that, and then things that are never allowed to happen, um, ball fields, um, wind turbines, um, things that have always not been allowed, but we've just tried to really flesh out that list on our website. Um, and then at the bottom of that list, there is a handful of things that we have not given a full yes or a full no to. Uh, those would be disc golf, equestrian trails, and mountain biking. Um, and so those will all be decided on a case-by-case -case basis by the NRAC. So if you 
uh, are applying for a piece of property that you think equestrian trails would serve a good conservation purpose. Um, you, you explain that to the NRAC, you present all this information to them, and they are the ones who decide yes or no equestrian trails can go on this specific property. Um, and last for this slide, solar fields have never been allowed, um, but we've had questions about solar panels being put on existing structures, and we're fine with that. If there's an existing building on a site, um, solar panels are absolutely allowed to be put you know, on the roof. Um, we just don't want to purchase a clean Ohio property that just gets turned into a solar field. Um, I need to, one second. Um, I'm trying to add Allison back as a co-host. Um, so you go to the three dots and then scroll down the list and it says make as a co-host. Thanks everyone. Um, so, but I'll cover this while she's doing that. Uh, um, uh, this is kind of a continuation of uh, previous year's uh, ineligible activities, but there's no new oil and gas leases permitted once the NRAC has approved the application. Um, and any modification or breach of the recorded deed restrictions or conservation easement that occur once the project agreement has been signed and without advanced written approval of the OPWC director are subject to the imposition of liquidated damages. So. Allison, I don't know if I need to stop sharing my screen, but the only thing I see are mute, ask to start video and chat. I don't see as uh, oh. to make you. A okay, then don't worry about it. We'll just keep hosting, host keep away. Um, Next slide. So yes, you did that. Um, uh, so again, this is not new, just a reminder that uh, wetland restoration is permitted on Clean Ohio sites, but wetland creation is not. So if there is a site that uh, historically was a wetland and it has been, um, you know, developed or uh, a good example is a farmland that has been tiled, um, so it can be farmed. Um, if it historically was a wetland, we can take that tiling out and let it let the water go where it wants to go and it can be restored back to a wetland. Uh, but to create something that was never there um, is the hydro modification that has never been allowed. Um, so restoring old wetlands is allowed, but creating something new that does not naturally belong is not allowed. Um, and I think the last new thing is the improvements on easements are no longer permitted. Uh, we can only allow improvements on fee simple purchases because uh, with easements, we don't really own the land. It's a conservation easement over top of the property. Um, so we're not going to pay for um, improvements such as trails and access improvements. Um, we can still help with invasive removal um, on those properties. And again, this is just a reminder, project acquisition must be completed within one year of the date you receive your project agreement. And then all post acquisition activities need to be completed within two years of you purchasing the property. Um, if you need any extensions, you can just email me, let me know what happened, um, what the delay was, and we can get an extension approved. Back to Allison. All right, so the um, funds available this year, um, we were uh, given the same allocation as um, the last funding round, which is really generous in this um, time uh, of cutbacks. So it's $3,324,704. 
Um, the maximum award is 75% of the total project cost and a 25% local match is required. Um, you can increase that. Um, that's just the minimum that is required. Um, the district does not cap um, how much you can ask for. Um, so just as long as you meet that um, local match. Let's see, next slide. Good. Uh, so eligible match, the contributions of money from individuals, local or federal government, um, contributions in kind through the purchase or donations of equipment, land, easement, labor, materials, appraised value of property if it's a bargain sale. Jen already spoke about um, going above the appraised value, but there's um, instances where uh, people will um, go below the appraised value and that can be used as match um, the difference. Um, the, uh, you have to provide a certification that all, lo all local revenues for the project will be available on or before the earliest start date listed in the project schedule. So, and the, you'll see that when we go over the applications. Um, grant money is also um, allowed to be used as match. However, you will have to, again, certify that you have that grant um, either from your CFO or with the award letter itself. So all local match has to be accounted for um, before the start date. Next slide. So eligible applicants, um, it includes local subdivisions, counties, city, villages, townships, special districts, soil and water conservation districts, park districts or park authorities, and um, nonprofit corporations that are A, exempt from federal income tax, and two, um, they have a conservation uh, activity as a primary part of its mission. Um, this is critical if you're a nonprofit and you're applying for a subdivision code, which I'm gonna get to, uh, you'll have to submit your uh, mission statement as well. Um, all eligible applicants must have a subdivision code in order to apply. Um, and so uh, if you don't have a subdivision code, you'll wanna start um, getting that code. You email Jennifer and um, I don't know how long that takes, Jennifer. Uh, typically not too long. Um, the director just needs uh, all of the, I forget all the forms, um, your IRS, 1023, I think it's called, um, and your mission statement showing that your primary activities are related to the Clean Ohio um, purpose. Um, yeah. Great. So, and if you um, want to know if you have a subdivision code, just email Jennifer and I. Our contact information is at the end of the slideshow. Yeah. So, um, Eligible activities um, include acquisition expenses, planning and implementation, and uh, site enhancement or restoration. So again, ineligible activities is uh, land for active recreation, as Jennifer alluded to, soccer fields, baseball diamonds, um, flood control projects, dams and dredging, and projects where stormwater management is the primary purpose. Um, there are other funds of money for that and um, administrative costs for running the uh, grant or developing the grant or program management. Uh, so that is not allowed. Um, if you want details, always check the um, Ohio Public Works Commission website for eligible costs as um, that is a living document and any changes that may occur. So go right to the source. Um, next slide. So uh, the District 1 NRAC application can be found um, on our website under the Clean Ohio Green Space Program page, which is under services. It's about three um, levels down, but in the current program year, there will be link to the applications. So that's where, that's the cover page you should be looking for. Um, and if you need help finding it, again, contact me. So um, 
The District 1 NREC application relates directly to the Ohio Public Works Commission policies and the NREC evaluation methodology. Uh, it's used along with the OPWC application um, to review projects. The applicant is responsible for making sure all documents are complete, accurate, and submitted by Friday, October 30th, 2020 by 4.30 p.m. And uh, they will be uh, screened for eligibility prior to evaluation, making sure that all the required documents are in there. Incomplete or late applications will not be evaluated by the NRAC. I think I might say this in another slide, but many of you will probably rejoice to hear that we are accepting um, electronic only applications um, via Dropbox. So you won't have to rush downtown in the middle of, of fall baseball traffic or, well, October 30th is later this year. So we wouldn't have that by then anyway, unless we were in the World Series. Um, so yeah, there it is. One digital copy submitted. Um, via Dropbox, um, the application supplements must be submitted on the form provided. Um, in the past, a lot of applicants will download the PDF form that is a fillable form, save it as a Word document, and change everything about it. Um, but no, this is a form provided for you. Um, we want to see uniform applications coming in to um, uh, be compared against one another. Um, materials must be typed using an 11 point font. Again, there's limited space, um, but if you're writing it in a six point font and it can't be read, it's probably not gonna be evaluated um, and submitted according to the District 1 NRAC protocol. I know this sounds crazy, but it's just, uh, there's a lot of information that you're supplying to us and uh, to the NRAC they need to be able to know where to look and to find the specific um, pieces of information. So uh, this is what the um, protocol is, the OPWC application. And again, underneath each section is um, the, um, the way you should be saving it as a PDF. So in, in you can create the full document, but also have it broken down into the specific sides because uh, some of these applications, depending on how many uh, parcels you may be purchasing from how many different owners can be quite onerous. Um, so having it separated out is uh, a, a boon to the application. So the OPWC application and then the District 1 NRAC application supplement, which I will review in a minute, and then attachments uh, separated by a cover page if it were in one. Um, the one is for authorizations and resolutions of support. Again, uh, we're going to go over not everybody needs resolutions of support. Um, so just know what you need to include, any agreements and um, letters of support if you're partnering with organizations. Next slide. Uh, maps and photos. Again, um, you have limited space for text, refer to a figure, map number, you know, make a table uh, in that and let us know where to look to find that information. Um, and another one is for natural resource information. Um, so that's any kind of survey, plan, um, document that you'll be um, referring to uh, in the area where you don't have a lot of information. Um, and it's your supporting documentation to show that uh, the, the species list or um, again, the plan uh, that is, has been approved uh, through a public process, things like that. And then the property information, um, I say by permanent parcel number, if it's the same seller and it's two parcels, do it by the, the seller, you know, just so that it makes sense. Um, and in that doc, in that um, section, it will include letters of intent or memorandum of understanding, purchase agreements, conservation easements, deeds, proposed deed restrictions, appraisals, and the county fiscal office valuations. Um, and that's why, again, we do require the full appraisals in District 1. Um, so that's uh, a big document and it'll be separated out as an attachment.
Next slide. So resolutions of support, uh, we do have a form and uh, for the appropriate political subdivisions as determined by the Ohio Vice Code. Um, if you need a county council uh, resolution of support, um, and hopefully that's on the next slide, uh, the request is due to us by September 8th, 2020 by 4.30 p.m. Um, that is to be entered in, to be read into the record um, on September 15th. Um, resolutions uh, from County Council require three table readings. Um, the project description, um, you don't have to get into great detail. This is just in support of your application. Um, the estimated project costs you could see at the bottom and uh, the estimated Clean Ohio application uh, how much you think the total is going to be and how much you think you're going to ask. If you're still not sure, you're still working out, aim on the high side. Aim on the high side. This is just, again, a support um, of not your project, but the, the application. So, um, oh, and resolutions of support. Go back one, please. Um, do not apply to improvement only projects. Uh, the the resolutions of support um, were required um, at, for the property's acquisition. So if you're coming for a previous project, you do not have to include the resolution of support. Um, next slide. No, go back one, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, this will be written up in the manual, and but a uh, basic breakdown of who needs a resolution of support. If you're a park district, you do not need a resolution of support. Um, you just need to show that the community that the park is in is um, supporting you. Uh, if you are a municipality and the project is wholly within the boundaries of the municipality, you only need a resolution of support from the municipality. You don't need Cuyahoga County Council um, uh, support. However, if your project crosses into another municipality, um, and we had this uh, with the Euclid Green Creek Corridor project, part of the project was in Cleveland and part was in uh, Euclid, and so they did have to come uh, in front of County Council for a resolution of support. So um, again, multi-jurisdictional projects will need to come before County Council. Um, and then the nonprofits uh, that are um, applying for projects will need to come before County uh, Council. Again, if you're not sure, give a uh, Jen or I an email or a call and we'll go through your project with you and determine if this is needed for you. Now we can go to the next slide. Thank you. All right, so the evaluation process is divided into three major components and that first is project eligibility. It's reviewing uh, the projects at first glance for all the required documentation, um, and that it is uh, a valid project, that it, uh, it meets the requirements of OPWC, of the ORC, um, and that it's not a um, water modification, stored water project, et cetera. Um, and then the preliminary project scoring begins. The applications uh, are shared with the NRAC members. Uh, there will be site visits planned. Um, and this year, um, it might be, um, uh, uh, it'll be planned in accordance with uh, public health, the best uh, public health concerns in mind. So it might be you with a, an iPad. Um, oh, so I realize that you can't see me. I've been talking this whole time, sorry. Um, so it might be you with an iPad showing the site or maybe a couple people out there wearing masks. Um, but we'll be communicating that with you as the time comes closer. Um, so, and public meetings uh, to review your projects. You have uh, an uh, applicant interview meeting where the NRAC can ask, uh, NRAC members can ask further questions and you get to present your project and um, 
So there's that. And then the final project scoring and recommendation uh, is the third and final phase. Next slide. That's okay. me. That's you. Uh, so I'm going to go over the OPWC application that is the same statewide. Um, so this is a screenshot of our website, which, how do I, go to share screen. Yeah, yeah I had a, I stopped and now I'm going to share again. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, so we're back. Um, so if you go to OPWC's website, it is uh, pwc.ohio.gov. Um, of these top bars, if you go to Programs, Clean Ohio application, it'll take you to this web page. Uh, it gives you all the information about the Clean Ohio program. Um, it'll give you information that we've gone over today about eligible project types, eligible costs. Um, you can look at some previous Clean Ohio projects. You can look at the Clean Ohio law and the ORC. Um, but if you screw it on here, you'll get the instructions and then the actual Clean Ohio application. Um, so it's a seven page form. Um, you have your applicant information, your project name, um, you know, what type of applicant are you? Um, page two, you have your financials. So is it a fee simple acquisition? Is it an easement acquisition? Um, is it just improvement only down here? Um, don't forget to include costs for your appraisals, surveys, title work, closing costs, environmental assessments. Those are all eligible costs um, to put in your estimated total project costs. And then the bottom half of the page is the project resources. Uh, where is your local share coming from? How much are you requesting from the NRAC? Um, do you have a private contribution of a land donation? Is it just all applicant contribution? You fill all that in here. Um, the next page, you have your project schedule. Um, like I said, make sure the dates for your land acquisition are within one year of when you receive your project agreement. Um, and you will receive your project agreement within four to six weeks after the NRAC approves it. Um, so the NRAC I believe the schedule, Allison, they're approved in January or February. Yeah. Um, so then you'll receive your agreement from me um, about a month after that. And then so within a year from then is when you'll need to have um, prepared to have the land closed on. Um, and then any site improvements within two years from then. Um, the next page is your project description. Give the specific location of where the project is located, your project components. Again, are you doing any site improvements? Is it just a uh, fee simple acquisition? Um, and then we just ask for uh, access information. Is it going to be open to the public and just some ownership history of the applicant? Um, and the next page is your project officials. There's three project officials for every project, a CEO, a CFO, and a project manager. Uh, the CEO and CFO are not allowed to be the same person. Um, either one of them is allowed to be a project manager, or you can have three different officials. Um, we just need at least two different people to be the CEO and CFO. Um, and we need email addresses for all of those, because that is our number one way to contact. Um, project officials. And page six of the application is just a completeness review to let you remind you of all the things that need to be attached. Um, I think Allison has one of these as well in her supplemental. Um, just as a reminder, um, you need an authorization from the applicant's governing body authorizing you to apply. Um, if you're working with anyone else, you need a cooperative agreement. Uh, your CFO needs to certify the local matches there, and so on. Um, uh, the proposed deed restrictions, Allison might be touching on this later, but those need to be included um, and filled in with the specific uh, use restrictions um, that the applicant plans on 
recording on that property. Um, then your CEO will sign the application and the last page, you just choose your top three uh, project emphasis of what's, what's the most important thing about this project. Are you preserving high quality wetlands? Are you reducing, eliminating um, non-native species? Um, you're obviously doing more than one of these, but you're just supposed to pick uh, the top three of what's the most important part of this project. Um, what's next? Is there anything else on the internet I was gonna show? Um, that's the application. Uh, project management. So back on the Clean Ohio webpage, um, you can click this to visit here for Clean Ohio Project Administration or to go straight to it under Project Administration, Clean Ohio. Um, this is where you can get more information about uh, your request to proceeds and disbursements once you have an approved project. Uh, this is where the appraisal information is to have the appraisal standards. Um, some examples of local match, um, a glossary of terms, um, site improvement um, documents that might be required if you're doing site improvements. Um, so those are the two main web pages on our website. You'll go to programs, Clean Ohio application, or project administration, Clean Ohio. That's when you'll get uh, most all information you'll need for the Clean Ohio program. Um, if you have an open Clean Ohio project, we do have all agreements posted here on our webpage. Um, oh, and the other important one is the advisories. Clean Ohio advisories um, is where you can find a plethora of information uh, broken down by different uh, categories. Um, and if you ever have any questions on a website, you can always search in this top bar um, for any term that you think should be somewhere on here and you don't know which web page it's on. Uh, so that's a general overview of our website. And go back here. Yes. Back to Allison and the supplement. All right. So we need to go back to the PowerPoint. Can you not see it? No. Oh, what do you see? I still see the website. Oh, um, here, let me stop and do it again. Good, great. Yep. Cool. Uh, okay, so um, the NRAC application, um, you know what? I am gonna share a screen. Yeah, can you share? I'm gonna try and share. Let's see, where is this? Uh, right here. So again, uh, this is what uh, it's gonna look like, a little bit different from last uh, few rounds. Um, and again, this is a fillable form. I'm going to go through all of the um, checklist, but I just want you to know this is what's going to be um, coming up. So, and again, yeah, it's fillable. You can check it or uncheck it. Um, so, and I'm going to go through this page by page. So, I wanted to uh, just do that and so stop share and go back to the website uh, it says no whoops so okay and then uh, let's see how do I uh, share the PowerPoint again Um, Jen, can you pull that up for the PowerPoint? A little, yes. Yeah, because mine's still where I left off in the 
yeah, so, okay. And then you'll have to go to, there it is, okay. So again, we also have a checklist um, and for authorizations, maps, property information, um, natural resource information, mineral rights, you should have a yes somewhere in there. Again, if it's a, um, a improvement only, uh, you're not gonna need a purchase agreement. So that's uh, an NA uh, not applicable. Um, so yes, no, um, again, is this a open space plan, open space improvement, or riparian corridors project? So again, use this as a guide. Um, if you're not sure, is this everything I need? You can again, submit it as a draft to me and I'll go through it with you and make sure that you have everything um, that is needed. Next slide. All right. So section one is project emphasis, and that's just a checklist. And uh, so that's pretty easy. And again, these are the requirements that are listed in uh, the Ohio Revised Code. Um, so uh, the project description. And I'm going to take a step back. We can go to the next slide, but I'm going to give a little history on um, what uh, has been changed for this year. Um, so uh, the, the NRAC um, decided to do a deep dive into the application and many of you uh, participated in a survey of applicants and potential applicants. And um, again, with changes at OPWC, we took a deep dive into this. So there are some changes. Everybody thinks, oh, it's the same thing from the last couple of years. So you're going to notice a couple differences as I go through this and I'll point them out. Um, but section two is the property description, and um, that includes any acquisition materials and uh, the, the, what the current condition is, who owns it, what you're going to do, is it purchased, is it easement, improvements, and how you're going to uh, improve that or make that open space uh, riparian corridor um, protected um, uh, and available to the public. So um, the first thing is uh, indicate the value of the land by providing the followed required documentation. So a summary of the appraisal report, which is included in the full, um, uh, uh, full appraisal report, there's a summary letter, should be included and attached with the application supplement section. So, and as I'm saying that, I realize that maybe I should have pulled up a letter as an example, and I will make sure that we have that on our website. So this letter is just like the summary report uh, so that the, the NRAC can get a feeling, NRAC members can get a feeling for what is um, in, included in your appraisals. Um, so, and then the, again, the appraisal should be um, uh, conducted by an ODOT pre-qualified appraiser, or as Jen pointed out, the uh, conservation easement um, qualified appraiser. And there uh, are links on our, in the manual to find those lists for the appropriate consultants. Um, you will also need the signed documentation from the appraiser that they received and read OPW standards and uh, procedures document. Um, and then we also need just a screenshot from the Cuyahoga County Fiscal Officer's uh, property valuation for the project site. So um, next slide. So in this um, section, we also ask for a detailed project uh, description, not to exceed two pages. Um, again, in the space allotted for you in the fillable form. Uh, define the project's context in the Cuyahoga County green print and provide a map in the associated uh, attachment. Uh, explain the current conditions, um, any site improvements that will be made as part of the project. Um, include an estimate of probable cost for all improvements utilizing clean Ohio funds. Um, and again, that, um, that estimate would be included in the natural resources uh, attachment and all this is outlined in the manual. Um, note any existing structures on the property, the appraised value of the structure, the proportion of the value to the overall value of the um, property, and the intended actions. Uh, the, if there's a property on there, you can't use it for commercial businesses. Uh, 
I believe there was a property when I first started that there was an old ice cream stand. Uh, you, you can't sell ice cream, but uh, you can use it um, as, you know, an educational facility or something like that. So next slide. So again, a count, Cuyahoga County green print is um, required for uh, the map. So you can see the location. For those of you that are not familiar with the green print, we used to provide uh, in-person trainings at libraries. Um, but these days you'll have to go onto our website and look for the training link. And uh, there is a video of one. Um, but again, if you have uh, need any help uh, navigating through that, um, I'm here to help you uh, through that. So again, there is the website at the bottom and you can find that video online. Next slide. Okay, so uh, the county principles, uh, so that can be found on page 10 of the supplement where you'll um, be given an opportunity to say how your project falls into that. Next slide. Um, the five principles are to preserve natural areas or open spaces, um, restoration, restore landscapes that have been degraded or destroyed, um, enhance the quality of natural areas or open space to promote passive recreation and educational opportunities. I want to point out that um, uh, this is um, not new. We've always had restore and enhance. However, it was pretty vague and the NRAC uh, went back to the um, Ohio Revised Code um, and look to see what they said. And uh, the Ohio Revised Code was pretty specific on how you're enhancing the property. So restoration does enhance the, the property for sure, but to enhance it for passive recreation and educational opportunities, uh, you'll get the points for restoration in the restoration category. Um, if you put signs pointing out the native plants that you are adding to that, then that will increase your score and enhance. So hopefully that will give you a little bit more direction in what the NRAC is looking for as they evaluate these principles. Um, links, uh, are you linking to natural areas to each other? Uh, as you saw there, we showed you some expansion to other existing parks, uh, linking to other county cultural and civic heritage areas. So this is um, an important um, uh, uh, principle for the District 1 NRAC. As you saw in that county land use map, the, the parks and natural areas and open space um, were very fragmented. So creating uh, these corridors is pretty important. So there's connections and continuity between these um, very important spaces. Um, and then providing public access to natural areas or county cultural and civic heritage areas. Um, this is an important press, uh, principle also for the District 1 NRAC. If you purchase a property um, in perpetuity but don't allow public access, you know, it's great for the environment, but uh, it's, it's not meeting some of the needs. Uh, there are some exceptions if there's endangered uh, species, but for the most part, we're looking to get people out to these places. And certainly in this time during the pandemic, we realize how important and critical these open spaces and, and parks and green spaces are for uh, the community. Next slide. Um, so restoration must comprise a portion of the project scope budget or local match and include supporting documentations in order to get the points. Um, when I uh, first began this program, it was, are you gonna restore it, yes or no? And then sometimes that restoration never happened. So um, tell us how you're gonna restore the property. Are you reducing or eliminating non-native and invasive species? Um, are you restoring to improve the ecosystems? Are you gonna reforest uh, and restore vegetation, um, restore uh, impervious surfaces and um, steep hillsides? So again, give us a plan. An example might be uh, restoring 
uh, a cold water habitat or, or, or you know, um, specifics like that would help uh, the MRAC evaluate that um, criteria. Next slide. Okay, so project benefits. Um, this is also a change from last year and it'll be on page 14 of the application supplement. And Jennifer, if you can um, forward that. Um, so this used to be a checklist. Um, it is now um, a, a narrative uh, briefly explained. This is a limited 2000 character limit. Um, the applicable benefits that are anticipated as a result of this project. Um, so again, the economic, social, and environmental benefits, and again, provide supporting documentation and the natural resources attachment as necessary to support all the stated benefits. Um, again, 2000 character limit, you're probably thinking, oh, how am I gonna fit this all? Um, it, be brief use bullet points, take that checklist, um, but show how um, these benefits um, will be anticipated as a result of this project. This was um, uh, uh, pretty important in the survey responses that we got back that the checklist was just generic. So show us how um, in, in this section, but be brief um, with your uh, words. So next slide. Um, in the Applicant, although we uh, applicant manual, even though we ask you to briefly explain, we give you some examples. Um, it's not an exhaustive list. You might have some other ones. Um, again, um, just refer to um, the supporting documentation. If you have supporting documentation, you don't have to put um, the whole um, survey in, but maybe just include two or three pages that you want to bring to the NRAC's attention. We, um, there's a lot of applications, there's a lot to read. So again, um, try and get your point across as succinctly as possible. So, um, and forward, same thing with the social benefits. Um, you know, again, providing public access, creating a gathering place, provides educational opportunities, bicycle and pedestrian linkages, um, improves public health and safety. We'll probably see a lot more of that uh, this year, enhance the cult cultural and civic heritage of the area and incorporates aesthetically pleasing and ecologically informed design. So again, use these as a jumping off point to explain um, how your project will enhance the social benefits and last, um, is the environmental benefits. Um, balances the built environment with natural environment, enhances environmental health, or reduce ecological risks, converts degraded parcels, et cetera, et cetera. So, and again, these are all listed. Um, and in the supplement, you'll see that there's just a square. Um, you don't have a checklist. So, um, the needs of the district. Uh, this is also a change from last year for applicants that um, have applied year after year. And if you um, go on uh, to the next slide, we're only asking three questions here. Um, is the project part of an adopted regional, county, community, or watershed plan? Uh, provide project plan documentation in the natural resources assistance attachment, um, but just let us know, um, you know, how this fits in with the greater scheme of a, a plan. Uh, will the project provide green space to an underserved population? And does it serve a low income and or minority neighborhood? So again, there were other questions um, in this previously, but it was um, questions that were addressed in the project description or the principles. So we really tried to cl clean up and tighten this um, application so there's less repetition um, for you as the writers and the preparers of this application as well as for the evaluators. And finally, the other relevant factors, um, which starts on page 18, there's six, uh, local match, level of coordination, readiness to proceed, immediacy, and mineral rights. And I'll just give you a brief detail on each of these. Um, so next slide. 
um, the local match, projects will be awarded uh, points in this category based on the total match provided. Um, again, your minimum is 25%. Um, the more you can contribute, the more points you can get. Um, provide a breakdown of the local match. Um, is it a uh, donation? Is it federal and state grants? Specify all sources. And again, include certification of funds, award letters, et cetera. If the um, grant, if you applied for a grant and you're counting on that as match, if it has not been awarded yet, find another source to cover that, that you can give back to that uh, maybe private donor if the grant does come through. Um, if not, then just make sure you can meet your 25%. Um, next. Okay, level of coordination, again, uh, we're looking at uh, collaborations. Are you partnering with other agencies um, and organizations? Um, can you give a brief description of the level of coordination that each agency or organization has provided? Um, and uh, attach letters of support. We have had previous applications where we get lists of people that uh, or organizations that do support the project but there were no letters from these organizations. So again, this will just help you accrue points in uh, this criteria. So by providing that uh, supporting documentation. Um, readiness to proceed. Um, applicants should include one of the following, a fully executed purchase agreement, um, and that will receive 10 points. I'll go over all the scoring um, in a little bit, but uh, if you have that, you, auto you automatically get the maximum amount of points. Um, purchase agreement that does not have all the signatures, um, a letter or memorandum of understanding, a copy of the conservation easement, a completed copy of the deed for uh, you know, riparian, and or open space improvement projects um, in which the land is already owned. Um, and again, uh, that includes the, in that, um, there's language on the OPWC website um, that has uh, the wording for our uh, model uh, deed, proposed deed restrictions. And there's the specific use and I'm forgetting the name of that section, and it says to be completed. Um, don't forget to complete that section. If that section is not completed, um, again, it will not be considered a complete application. Um, and if you have questions, because you're not sure, uh, check with Jennifer and I on how to um, achieve that uh, requirement. And last thing to note, uh, this is state money, public money. Applications with confidentiality agreements in lieu of purchase agreements will not be evaluated. This is a fully transparent process um, with public money. Uh, so I saw that there was a question. Yes. Do you want the full text of all plans mentioning the project as attachments or will web links suffice? a good question. Um, so here's my recommendation to you. Um, I would give the web links for the full uh, plan, but if there's something specific that you want to bring to the attention, cut out that chapter, cut out those pages and the PDF and put it in the attachment. I can't guarantee that all 11 members are going to take the time to open up. So again, you should be providing um, what, what in that document is important and needs to be noted. So does that make sense, Keely? Hopefully she'll type back. Um, and then next slide. Um, immediacy. Applicants must indicate whether the project area is vulnerable to be de being developed as something other than open space and how uh, this development, meaning uh, what 
could happen if your project doesn't take place would be detrimental to the community. Um, so why is um, it so important for you to get your project passed this round? Um, and immediacy is not how immediate can you start. All of these should be, um, uh, be ready to go. It, as you can see by all the requirements and all the funding that we need to know, these should all be what, I, uh, what I've adopted from back from uh, uh, 2008, the shovel ready projects. So, um, but why is it important that your project has to be done uh, immediately? What is, um, what is gonna happen to that project if you don't start in this um, round? Next slide. Mineral rights. Applicants must indicate whether the current landowner will retain the mineral rights. The mineral rights will be purchased and transferred to another entity. Um, if the mineral rights are not being purchased, but you've obtained legal agreements with the lessee to minimize the impacts of mineral rights, um, and can show how current oil and gas wells will not impact sensitive natural resource areas, uh, let us know. And then, or will the mineral rights be purchased and maintained? Um, and uh, again, that is one of those projects. If you uh, purchase and maintain the mineral rights, you automatically get the 10 points for that project. So next slide. All right. Uh, so just want to check. Uh, okay, no comment. Um, so here is the breakdown of the points. Uh, the applications go out to the um, individual NREC members and between the uh, reviewing the applications, uh, potential site visits, uh, and the uh, applicant interviews, each criteria will be a scored, a, um, assigned a score from one to 10. Um, and then depending on the, um, the weight factor uh, will determine the maximum weight of points. So um, everything is uh, 10, but the weight factor for preserves is three, uh, restores and enhance are both two, and linking areas, that's a three, that's a higher priority and provides access as two. And so um, that is 45, almost half of your application. So next slide. Again, uh, the economic, social, and environmental benefits are all 10 points. Again, with the um, weight factor of the environmental being the highest priority, social, the second, and economic. Uh, number one. And then the needs of the district, again, that's the same point structure as before, even though uh, the, the questions have been narrowed. So uh, 10 uh, points uh, with a weight factor of three. Next slide. And then uh, the other relevant factors are all 10 points uh, with the weight factor of one. The total uh, weighted points that you can achieve is 260. And um, in order to be recommended for funding, projects must receive a score of at least 60% or 156 points uh, available to be eligible. So that's how these are scored. Um, in January, when I go through the, the, the schedule is on the next slide. Uh, in, January, there is a meeting to review the scores in public. Uh, so, and uh, if you have questions about your score um, or the NRAC members can question each other about the scores, there is discussion um, about that. Um, but as you can see, uh, you'll have plenty of time over the 60 allotted days um, to uh, prepare your applications. Uh, the preliminary screening will be October 30th to November 6th. Um, site visits, and again, we will be in touch uh, with how those are um, going to be conducted. And uh, Jennifer, I believe the Columbus, you do have a travel restriction. Um, so uh, 
you won't be coming up this year. Is correct. that correct? Yeah, state employees well, are not allowed to travel for business still. So we will need to figure a way to do some of these virtually um, and I will work with the applicants. Um, the evaluation period uh, will be November 6th to December 18th with the applicant interviews on Friday, December 4th. Oops, a little spacing there, sorry. Um, and then again, uh, if you are applying, mark Friday, December 4th on your calendar now. Um, we have the day uh, set aside for these interviews and I will be in touch. You don't, um, eventually you'll only need um, 20 minutes or so um, of your time for that meeting. Um, but depending on how many applications we get, uh, we set aside the whole day. Again, that meeting, uh, Wednesday, January 13th, uh, is when the NRAC meeting uh, to review the scores, the preliminary scores. Um, and if there is uh, no issues, the vote on the final project ranking may occur at that January 13th uh, score review meeting. If there are issues and uh, the NRAC uh, votes to extend this and relook at the scores, then there is, they set aside a meeting in, Thurs, uh, in February, Thursday, February 11th, um, to vote on that final ranking. But please remember that if you miss that January 30th meeting, you may miss that final vote. Um, the recommendations are due April 30th, 2021, um, but we will definitely get them in before that. So, next slide. Um, we are here to help you. Um, these are all good programs. And um, every year I definitely ask OPWC if they can increase our allocation. Um, and obviously we know that that's a, a tough ask this year, but um, uh, so, but we're here to help you uh, do the best that you can. Um, and again, remember that if you know ahead of time that you're just acquiring the, the property and saving the improvements for a, a future phase to um, really emphasize those criteria and try and maximize those points for preservation um, or restoration um, and and maximize the points that match your project to get the highest thing that you can and, and rely on us for assistance. Jennifer, anything? Yeah, I just wanna throw out, thank you all for coming to this today to watch us fumble through this presentation, <laughs> uh, but mostly thank you for being good stewards of this Clean Ohio program. Uh, we, earlier this year, didn't know if we were gonna have funding for a future, um, program. The capital bill was up in the air with the state legislators and it came through at the 11th hour that we uh, got funding for at least one more round of Clean Ohio. Um, so that just speaks to the program as a whole across the state is well known and people use it and like it. And um, so thank all of you for being a part of that. So, and I want to mimic Jen's thanks for your patience, um, for our technical difficulties. Um, these uh, Zoom meetings um, are just starting to become habit. Uh, so hopefully, um, if we are still doing this in December, we will have it down pat. <laughs> so, um, and with that, let's uh, stop sharing screen and open it up to question and answers. Yes. Um, if you are gonna unmute yourself um, or if you need help unmuting, uh, tell us in the chat, but introduce yourself and uh, where you're from. So uh, that will also help. Crickets. Mm -hmm. We answered all of their questions. <laughs> Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Showing my age? 
<laughs> All right, Chris said um, goodbye. So, um, uh, or nice job, not, not goodbye. Um, but uh, if we're all good to, um, you know, adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> that this is a public meeting. All right, well, again, thank you so much for your patience. Um, well, the, this um, uh, presentation it will be up online. It is up online, the handouts are up there and our contact information is there. What I will say though, for both Jen and I, the best way to reach us is first via email and then by a phone, because we are working uh, mostly remotely, or at least I am in once a week. So thank you all. Yes. And the full application material should be on the website next week. Yes. Excellent. All right. 